Good evening viewers and welcome to 4 Drive TV. I'm Simon Christie. We've got a great episode planned for you, so hang around, I hope you enjoy it. Tread lightly, keep it safe, play hard. G'day, I'm Stuart Telfer, Motoring Events Manager for Variety the Children's Charity in New South Wales and you're joining us on our 2012 Variety Gong to Gong Charity Adventure. This year's adventure is from Wollongong to Gerringong. That's a 40 minute drive in normal conditions. It's going to take us six days to do it. We get lost a little bit. What we're doing is we're going from Wollongong where we start, we go out to Goulburn, Cooma, up into the Victorian high country, Orbost in Victoria. Then we make a swing, we come back into New South Wales, back into Eden, then up to Mogate, and then we finish off by driving into Gerringong and finishing on Gerringong Beach. This is the seventh adventure we've done, and we've taken a lot of Australians to different parts of the country they wouldn't want to do on their own. There's plenty of times when people have driven up the highways and looked at mountains and thought, wow, I'd love to go and drive up in there, but never been feeling safe to do that on their own you come and join us at Variety. And we make this trip one that everybody can do and do it in comfort and do it in safety because we do it together. Variety is the children's charity and we look after kids from zero to 18. We're a fundraising event charity, which means we have to run our own events to make the money to look after these kids. We're spending over a million dollars a month nationally. So it means we've got to run a lot of events to bring that money in to help these special needs children. This is a fundraising thing to make money for the kids that we get the fun. Now this is comfort off-roading. This is a turnkey operation. You get in your vehicle, start and finish. Everything's taken care of for you. All your meals, all your accommodation. So what happens is you spend your money and then you've got the best breakfast, the best lunches, the dinners, amazing, and then the entertainment, but the accommodation, 10 out of 10. So they do everything for you. You can have all the fun of getting dirty, but at night, you're in five star. Just back. As with any quality 4x4 accessory, a snorkel can give your vehicle that tough look and also make it outback ready. But how long does a snorkel take to install? Well, typically an experienced mechanic will take around three hours to install a snorkel. It's not simply a bolt-on case, but if you're an experienced home mechanic, you can have a crack at it yourself. Now, for me personally, when it comes to fitting a snorkel, you need to drill a 100 millimeter hole through your panel. Now, if you're comfortable to do that yourself, fine. If you're not, get an experienced mechanic who fits high quality snorkels to do it for you and you'll be guaranteed the job gets done properly and you'll have a warranty for the fitment as well as the snorkel itself. But a high quality snorkel made in Australia, UV20 stable, will also come with very precise and very easy to follow comprehensive instructions. It'll have diagrams, it'll have templates on there that make it quite an easy job. So guys, fitting a snorkel at home, the question comes down to, are you prepared to whack that 100 mil, or possibly even bigger, hole saw through the side of your pride and joy to fit that snorkel? If you've got the confidence, have a crack. If not, get an experienced mechanic to do it. But like I've always said, only deal with reputable Australian companies and make sure the 4x4 accessories you fit to your vehicle, even if you need to save a little bit more, are high quality products. And in the case of snorkels, you should ensure that that snorkel is made from UV20 stable polyethylene. It's manufactured here in Australia. It's backed by an Australian company with an Australian warranty and service people that you can talk to right here in Australia. And it's backed by service agents Australia wide. Why would you go for anything else when the performance and protection of your vehicle is paramount? 
You've invested heavily in the vehicle, so make sure you put the best 4x4 accessories on it. First morning we all jumped up out of bed, keen to get going, we headed into Wollongong itself, into the mall where a breakfast was organised and we were the star attraction of the mall for the shoppers coming to work that morning. Wonderful spread put on right there at the staged area and the entrance was signing organisation. We even got some donations along, we had a great breakfast and that set the scene for a wonderful day ahead of us. Following breakfast, we took off through our start arch. It's always a tradition we do that, and we headed up through the streets of Wollongong and out into the bush, up into the high country, and headed to Maroolan. We headed up to a sheep station out at Myruna, where the lovely ladies of Maroolan from the CWA came and made us a spectacular lunch in the wool shed. We saw some magnificent pieces of equipment there from the sheep shearing days at that particular property. Following lunch, we took off into some magnificent farming country where we saw beautiful open spaces. We crossed some causeways. We have done a few causeways, some dry but some with some water in it and that was a lot of fun. Not so much for the cameraman I'm afraid, he got involved in the water as well. Splashed the cars, I think we even splashed the cameraman at one stage. As we headed further on to the afternoon run, down some steep embankments, had to engage 4x4 at the Bolango State Forest, which was an interesting and maybe a scary trip for some of them. G'day, I'm Nick Minnell from ARB Penrith. David Brickhill from Kmart 4 Wheel Drive. Hi, I'm Andrew from Berrima Diesel DP Chip. Cameron Brown from Brown Davis Automotive. Alan Johnson here from Piranha Off-Road Products, a very proud Australian manufacturer of top quality four drive products for our industry. What we're seeing nowadays is there are a huge range of different things that you can buy for your vehicle. Whether it's a winch, whether it's a bull bar, whether it's suspension or a dual battery system, whatever it is, there is more choices. Now that's intrinsically a good thing. 
Many of these choices that are out there though are not what they appear to be and this is something which is very, very difficult because once upon a time you bought a battery or you bought a tyre, you knew what was going to be pretty damn good. Nowadays there are some products available, especially on the internet, that are actually very, very substandard. How they're even allowed into Australia is an amazement or a puzzlement because it's not doing us any good. When you look at some of these shows, you'll realise the four wheel drive pro tips, your 4x4 and four wheel drive TV base themselves around quality Australian products and Australian companies. When you're looking at setting your vehicle up to get out and see this great country of ours, there's some things you should really look at. When you purchase your bull bar, your roof racks, your diff locks, get a good quality made product. Don't go for some of the Chinese knockoffs. You'll pay once and then you'll pay again later when it fails on you. Okay, it's your hard earned money that you're working hard for and by putting what we believe is some of the best products that are on the market that are made here in Australia and are used extensively throughout the world. It's worth spending that little bit extra and spending that little bit more time researching to make sure you've got yourself a high-end, great product. The inferior products may be the difference between you getting home and not getting home. It's worth maybe paying that little bit extra to make sure you get the service and the quality you require. Now there's lots of these sort of products on the market and there's plenty of inferior stuff now. And unfortunately the internet is one of those places where we think we're going to get ourselves a bargain, but we don't always do. And look, let's face it, you know, the internet is here to stay. All the businesses pretty much on this show use Facebook to update and keep all their customers and the followers, you know, seeing what they get up to. But there's a bad side sometimes to this sort of easy point, click and deliver to your door type of parts that happen out there. So again, you've got to be very, very careful with some of the products. The numbers look higher, they look better, they look like they're going to really perform well. But in practical terms, people phone up and say, listen, I've got your tray, I've got your isolator, I bought this internet battery, the thing doesn't work properly, my fridge only runs barely one night instead of three days like everyone else's does. Why is that? The answer is really simple, it's self-evident. You've got a crappy battery, unfortunately, guys. It just ain't going to cut the mustard. When you pay $300 for a battery, then you pay $90 for a cheap one, what do you think's been left out? Something's missing, isn't it? It's not a big profit margin necessarily. What it is, is it put less lead in it, there's less plate material, there's less acid in there, the whole thing is diminished in terms of capacity, it's not going to work. Generally what you'll find is in the inferior copies is they'll make savings with inferior materials, they cut corners with design. With some of the cheap bull bars we've seen that when you're spooling in your winch the centre pan of the bar will bend, they're made of a lot lighter steel, we have seen some of them tend to break, crack and fall off. If you're buying a top quality product you won't have these issues. Now the importance of these sort of products is the fact is what you're doing is enhancing things like departure angles. Now we've seen throughout the weekend that this has been protected with side rails like on the utes and also when we've got the old 60 series or the Nissans out here as well. You've seen some of the vehicles scraping on rocks as they go down. Now just imagine if that was just some flimsy steel, that bar would have just probably bent up and all of a sudden you've got a damaged rear door and the probably $600 you paid in the first place you thought it was cheap ends up being expensive. You're going to do it once, do it properly. That's what it's all about. Same with the rivers. When we went through there, make sure everything's sealed up. And again, snorkels, all those sorts of good quality products. One of the things we're seeing in our industry specifically is where people come along and they buy a whatever it might be, a snorkel or whatever, and these products let them down really badly. They do not perform like they're intended to do. And I guess Mr. Consumer says, well, you know, this thing hasn't worked, therefore, ipso facto, all winches are rubbish because my one's let me down. This is not the case. There are some wonderful, really, really good products out there. We're out here in the Australian bush. We're in a pretty remote area. We need the things that we buy to work and work well. We don't want to have a breakdown. We're in the Simpson Desert. You don't want things going wrong. You don't want batteries letting you down. You don't want fridges not working. You don't want lights not working, whatever it might be. For most four-wheel drives, there's an option that can get you that extra kilometres you may need to come into the outback and making sure you always get back out. In the old words of the, of, of the famous thing, caveat emptor, let the buyer beware, the buyer really does have to do some research. Now where do you do your research? That's one of the big tough questions we get asked. Just think about how easy it is to look around on the internet to point and order things and get them delivered, so is the research as well. Do a bit of research and don't just sit on your backside using a mouse and doing it. Get into some magazines, watch TV shows and go into your good local four-wheel drive shop and ask the guys what's going to be best for the type of work you're doing. 
again, insist on good quality products. Yes, you can look on the internet, and the internet is a place to go to forums, but in many cases, the forums are not accurate places to get information, a place to perhaps start to get some questions. Go to four drive clubs, talk to the club people, see what they use. Really you want to have a think about the brands that are out there. There are a number of quality brands out there. They're built for the type of terrain and the environment that they're intended for. Generally, if they're from overseas origin, then they'll be designed to comply with European legislation or American legislation perhaps. In Australia, when we buy a car battery or a battery for our four-wheel drive or a battery for our dual battery system, they're rated to an Australian standard. Many of the batteries that come in from overseas are rated to other standards that are not the same as our standards. When you're looking to buy a four-wheel drive product, look at something that's been designed, engineered and tested in the Australian conditions by four-wheel drivers. There's no point going to an online store buying something where you've got no backup. Come and see some real people, get some real honest advice. Australian based, Australian made, make sure it's good quality and I think in this day and age, the name brands that are still here after a very, very long time. We've been in the diesel industry since 1956. We've been servicing diesels for an extremely long time. Even on the chip side of the business, We've been at that for about 15 years. So we've got a very big support network and of course a quality product. When you're in the market to buy some four-wheel drive gear, it's worth looking at an experienced company. As you look around, some of these companies have been in the business for over 20 years. In that 20 years, they've spent so much time looking into their core products and working with people right the way around the country that can help you at any stage with anything that you may require. You've been following this show for many episodes, I'm sure, and I'm sure you've seen our vehicles all tested to their extreme. So again, I don't think without that sort of testing, we'd have anything to show for it. And we see a number of dissatisfied customers that have thought they're buying the original, for example, only to find that perhaps they've got a problem and they're not covered under warranty. Maybe they can't get after sale service and are fairly disappointed with the purchase. Again, with a lot of these products, if you're buying from a good store, they're going to have a network and they're going to have people who can come and help you all over the country. That's part of the sales and service that you will be offered when buying great products. And that, at the end of the day, is what's important because while you're out there with your family enjoying the great outdoors, you don't want that product to ever let you down or fail you and your family when you're either towing with it, winching off it, using a high lift jack off it, or actually just using it to carry those important bits and pieces on the back of your car. Because problems aren't going to go wrong in the middle of the CBDs. It's going to be out in the middle of nowhere when you're going to need the service to get you back home. There's a number of stocking dealers across the nation. Get hold of them. They've got all the specialty accessories. They've got all the advice. So all I can say, guys, is I'm not here to tell you what you should and shouldn't buy, but you need to make an informed, educated decision on that product. David Brickhill from Kmart Four Wheel Drive. Nick Manell from AOB at Penrith. Cameron from Brown Davis. Andrew from Berrima Diesel DP Chip. Alan Johnson here from Piranha Off-Road Products. When it comes to protecting your family and your vehicle, buy something that's great quality and buy something that's built to last. And if possible, buy an Australian product. You're buying your kids a job. Hi, my name's Vincent. This is my son Kyle. This is our 2004 GU. We bought it five years ago. We've fitted it with two inch lift, coils and shocks, 30 mil blocks under the springs. We have a, a locker in the front. We're running 33 Maxis, big horns. The mods we want to do with our vehicle is we want to finish putting a rear bar on the back, which we want the finances to do. Trips we've got planned, we want to do from Broken Hill through to Birdsville, across the big, big red trips that we do, we go to Love Day every year in August and we drive around in high country in Beechworth, Nelverado. Things we want to add, add to the vehicle later on is, as I said, is our rear bar drawers later on when we, we lose one kid, doesn't want to come with us anymore. Next trip we're planning on doing is I've got a few blokes from work, we want to do a trip up into the high country, 
So we're in the process of doing that when it cools down a little bit more. We can get up there and drive around the Craig's Hut across the Wanangatta and Dargo and back. And one we are planning, hopefully in May or May next year, to go from Broken Hill, Cameron Cameron's Corner, Birds Hill, and hopefully go up and over Big Red, just to say we've done it. For details on the next Your Rig trip, keep an eye on the 4Drive TV Facebook page. But for those selected, each weekly winner takes home a Berrimah diesel cap, a Wild Deer and Hunting Adventures magazine, a Dirt Comp magazine, a copy of Blitz magazine, a Manel Motors stubby holder, a Mean Mother stubby holder, a Mean Mother coffee mug, a U-Fix-It windscreen repair kit, an emergency ration of gear oil from 360 gearboxes, a complete Donaldson diesel fuel filter kit including chassis mount, a plug and play Narva driving light harness, a serve of sanitarium up and go, a stubby of Bundaberg ginger beer, a Narva pocket LED light, a solar pod USB solar charging device from Roller Solar, a set of the legendary smart scissors and a knife sharpener from our friends at Keesler, a complete Oricom tradie kit featuring two UHF radios, charging stations, microphones and batteries, a bottle of Sweet Baby Ray's basting, marinating, tasting and dipping sauce, a pair of the innovative expander pegs, a pair of large four-wheel drive TV stickers, one of the new ARB air locker t-shirts, an ARB jacket, a pair of ARB socks, an ARB cap and it's all neatly packaged up in an ARB cargo gear carry bag. I'd like to thank Simon and Miranda for inviting us along on the trip and all the sponsors for the prize pack that are doing an awesome, great day, thank you very much. G'day, I'm David from Team DGR. We're here with our Moon Buggy racing at the Superior Engineering Short Course Challenge here in Queensland. First round for this year. Times have changed, people want to go faster. We've jumped on board with that because I've got to say there is an adrenaline rush for sure. Some of our events these days are three hours long as opposed to what used to be 10 minute races. So the tracks they've got here today are pretty well flat track type stuff. There's a few off camber corners, but generally we're long sweeping type bends. We started the day with everything very muddy, very slippery in the first couple of laps. It's certainly dried out today. Now we're back to what is essentially a dry track for the majority of it. So the challenge is for us is to ch adapt to those changing conditions. Not only do we have those corners where we have to really think and be, be careful and not overcommit, we've also got a couple of high speed jumps here. So we've got a jump over the back that currently we're hitting at about 95 kilometres an hour, getting a reasonable amount of air. We've got a fairly decent suspension package here so it doesn't get crazy, but basically we're giving it all we've got to try and air it out there and put on a show for the crowds. Big thank you to 4 Drive TV, not just for being here and covering this event. 4 Drive TV have always supported us. We've had a lot of airtime over the years and we're very thankful to Simon Miranda and the rest of the crew there. Big thanks also to the sponsors who also support this event. Big one here is Damien Edwards. I mean, he of his own back has put in a huge amount of effort both in preliminary rounds, testing to see what's going to work. And then this is the first real test to see how we go. See, we've got quite a few spectators here. I've heard nothing but positive feedback from the crowds. We were very worried with the rain coming up at this event, thinking that it was going to be washed out, or very close to. We are very lucky with the sun shining today, so we can't say anything negative about what we're experiencing. It's just fantastic. Make sure you tune in next week when we start our full coverage of the Superior Engineering Short Course Challenge, Round 1 from Queensland. Well, viewers, the end of another episode, unfortunately, but we'll be back bigger and better next week with another instalment of your favourite four-wheel drive TV. I'm Simon Christie. Tread lightly. Keep it safe. Play hard. I look forward to your company next week. <laughs>